What's up guys, welcome to part 3 of our top-down shooter tutorial. Um, this will probably be our last um, tutorial for this series. Um, and in this tutorial, we're going to be programming our enemies and their, um, their bullets, alright? You know, those orange things that they're shooting. Um, so, um, yeah, let's get started. So, um, if you have not watched our previous videos, make sure to watch that first before um, watching this tutorial because um, there will be things we have already programmed in. Great. So, so far we should only have our player and his projectiles, which can, um, you know, shoot. And he can move around, and he doesn't go over the borders, right? So, um, what we need to do now is to create a new sprite, and we're going to call it enemies. Okay, I've already done that, and in here, I have another tank, alright? I made it red, because, you know, usually, um, tanks are... Um, bad tanks are red. <laughs> it's really generic. Um, so, um, we want to um, create a new block, and we're going to call this um, clone at x, x and y, y. Alright, so first we are going to create... Whoop, let me delete those variables. So you won't get a sneak peek at them. We're going to create two new variables. We're going to call them x for the sprite only and y for the sprite only. All right, and here we're going to say set x to x, set y to y, and we are going to create a clone of myself. Next, we're going to say when I start as a clone, we're going to say forever, go to our player projectile sprite, and you can see we have our positioning um, um, blocks here. So we can just take the script, we're going to drag it in our enemies, and we'll just snap it in there. Great. So, if I make another um, loop here, I'll say when clicked forever, let's say clone at x, pick random from negative uh, 300 to 300, and y, pick random from negative 300 to 300. And if we run the script, boom, we now have these tanks that are cleaning around us, and they move and they hide when they reach the edge, which is exactly what we want. And we also want to add a waiting duration between, it, otherwise they would be cloning like infinitely, right? So next we want to move towards the player, so we're going to make a new uh, block we're going to call this move enemies. Uh, click on OK. And we're going to put it right after um, everything here. So in move enemies, we're going to say if um, our x of tank, all right, make sure it's the x variable of the tank and not x position. If our x of tank is larger than our own x, so our x, then we are going to change our x by uh, 1. So basically, if... Uh, if our player's x is like here, right? So it's larger than our enemy x. Then we're going to change the enemy by 1. So it's going to slowly reach the player, right? And we're going to do the same thing if the player's, um, you know, x is less than our enemy x. Then we want to change our x by negative 1. So I need to switch those around. Great. Um, and we're going to do the same thing for our... Uh, vertical movement. So now we're just going to change everything to y of tank, y of tank, and change these variables to y. So let's try our um, project now. Now, uh, let me hide the original enemy. You can see that all the clones are moving towards us, right? Which is really nice. Um, and when they reach here, they stop. So uh, they're all coming towards me. Um, and you can see a problem is that um, all the tanks are grouping together, and um, I don't. There is a fix to this, which is what I did in my other project, but um, it sometimes causes glitches. So we're just gonna keep it like this for now, all right? Um, and finally, we wanted to point towards the player, right? So we're gonna say, point towards our uh, tank. That's um, our player, right? Um, oh wait, they're going. They're pointing this way. Let me just add in a turn block here. Well, this is because um, my costume here is facing downwards. All right. Um, 
If your costume is facing this way, this way you don't have to do anything. Mm. Yay, they're now pointing towards me. Um. Great. <laughs> so now we can start programming our enemy projectiles, which will be a lot harder than our um, player projectile. Alright, so go to your player projectile sprite, and we're going to duplicate it. And we're going to call this... Enemy projectiles, all right. And let me go to the costumes and make this orange. I think I have backpacked it here. Yay, we have an orange um, bullet here, which is much better than our blue one because the blue one's for the player. All right. So, um, we can keep these scripts, but um, we're gonna take these away, and we're gonna change them later. All right. Um. Oh, we we are we are also not going to point in the direction of tank, right? So, um, yeah. So in our enemy sprite, in our move enemy sprite, in the bottom here, we're going to say if pick random from one to let's say uh, twenty five equals to one, then we're going to create a projectile, right? This means that about every twenty five times this script runs, it's going to create a projectile, right? So. Um, it's about one bullet per second because this entire loop usually has an FPS of around 30. So um, around one projectile per second, which is pretty good to me. Let me change it to three. Um, and we're going to make a new custom block. We're going to call this create projectile. Click on OK. And right here, we're going to put it in here. And in our create projectile block, we're going to uh, create two lists. Um, three lists actually. Well, this is because um you can't record a clone's um you know x and y position in another sprite. All right, the sensing doesn't allow that. That's why you have to store the clone data inside lists. All right, we're gonna call this x for our sprites, y for our sprites, and direction because the projectile needs to know what direction our tank is facing. Right, for our sprites. All right. So at the start of a loop right here, we're going to delete everything. We're going to delete all of direction. We're going to delete all of X and we're also going to delete all of Y. And in our create projectile block, we're going to add. All right, we're going to add our uh, X to the direction, I think. Yes, uh, we are going to add our X to enemy X. Yes, add our X to X, sorry about that. Um, we're going to add our Y to our Y, and we're also going to add our uh... oh yeah. Actually, we don't need the the, the direction um, list. I just remembered. Well, this is because the enemy projectiles want to point towards the tank, right? So we actually don't need this list. Let me delete that. <laughs> sorry. So after we add our x to x and add our y to y, we're going to create a clone of our enemy projectile. So create a clone of enemy projectiles. But we also need a variable to um, detect um, which clone it is, right? So right now, if we go here, we're going to say set x to item 1 of x and item 1 of y. Well, um, will this work? This will. This won't, right? Because um, the enemies will be constantly adding more items, so it's always going to be uh, the first one that it's going to record. So that's not what we want. So we need a variable to determine which clone it is, right? So we're going to make a new variable for all sprites, and we're going to call it a uh, clone hashtag. All right. So we're going to set x to item clone hashtag of x. And set y to clone hashtag of y. Um, so if we go right here, we are going to um, change our clone hashtag one and create a clone of any projectiles. So if clone hashtag is zero, it changes clone hashtag by one and creates this clone. And in here, it will know which item it is, and that item will be added by the clone that just you know made the projectile. So. Um, we also want the enemy projectile to point towards our player, right? So, if I say point towards our tank, 
Wait, let's try it. I'm not sure if it will work yet. Um, yay, look at that. They can now shoot bullets. That is, like, exactly what we want. But you can see they're kind of twisted, and this is the same reason. It's because my bullet is facing this way. So I, all I need to do is to turn it in, turn it, like, some degrees or something. I have to try it now. Oh, why is it shooting there? So this is um, obviously not working. Um, I wonder why. Um, what is clone hashtag right now? Okay, so we know that's working. Um, yeah, why is it shooting from this spot? Hmm. Uh, let me go to our aim projectiles. Ah, this is because our aim X is interfering, alright? Because um, we don't want it to be the mouse X. We want it to be, um, you know, this X, right? So we're going to take away this. And we're going to replace it, alright? You can see here. We're going to set aim X to X of player minus X, alright? It's going to be our tank's position. So if we go to our sensing... And we take this block and we change it to tank x of player minus our uh, x. And we're also going to set aim y to y of tank minus y. So that should do it. Let's see. Yay, look, they're now shooting towards me. But they're still shooting from this place. Yeah, why is that? Hmm, the questions of life. Let's see, here. There has to be, like, something going wrong here. Let's check our X. 56. Alright, nice. So we know that's working. We know that mechanism is working. Then why are they shoot? Why aren't they shooting? Why are they shooting there? Okay, it's probably in our enemy projectile. Um, let's see. Um, if we check here, oh, I wonder why. Hmm. Let's try running it again. Yeah, it's shooting from this spot, but isn't the clone hashtag... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, the clone hashtag is a global variable, so why is it shooting there? Let me click on this. What is item clone hashtag of X? Nothing. Hmm. Oh, oh, yes. I just remembered why. We need to set our clone hashtag to zero at the start of our script, All right? We need to set clone hashtag to zero. That was the mistake, guys. If we try now, yay, they're actually shooting from the tanks now. I knew it. Ah. See, um just a simple block could be like um the key to your bugs. Just because I forgot to set this variable to zero. So you see now our tanks can shoot their bullets perfectly. No glitches, alright? They're all shooting. Pew 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 pew. Pew pew pew. This is really great, alright? Um Rato. <laughs> just figured it out. Probably took us a long time. Sorry about that. Um, well, now we want um, the enemies to kind of die when it hits the player projectile, right? So, in our move enemy block at the bottom here, we're also going to say if we are touching our player projectiles, then we're going to wait zero seconds. This is very important. Wait zero seconds. Then we are going to, let's say, uh, delete this clone. But if we want the tank to kind of have health, let's say let's say it has two health, then um, we can create a new variable. We're gonna call this clone HP. All right, for our health. And in here, we're going to uh, in a cloning block, we're going to set our clone HP to let's say uh, probably two. And here we're going to say change our clone HP by negative one. And if our uh, HP 
is less than one, then we're going to wait zero seconds to delete this clone, right? And we can also make a brightness effect thing, which means that if we put a set brightness effect to zero here, and a if we touch it to if it touches the player projectile, we kind of want it to you know make it slightly brighter. Let's say twenty five. Uh, 25, 50, oh, let's say 25, yeah. And let's take out this wait zero seconds. We're going to put it right here. So if we try it now, uh, we shoot it, boom. It kind of gets brighter, right? But then it dies instantly. Well, why is that? That's because our player projectile is not deleting, right? The clone's always there. So it immediately disintegrates our um, enemies. So all we need to do here is that we're also going to say, if we are touching our enemies then we are going to you know wait zero seconds all right this is also very important wait zero seconds and we're going to delete this clone so if we try it now we should be able to snipe down these in two shots see one two one two one two one two one two, one, two. great okay this is working perfectly one gets a little brighter two dead if i hit it it gets brighter second shot dead Boom, 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 boom. Yay, so that is a great success for us after a long time of uh, the debugging, I should call that. Um, and finally, we want the tank to die um, if it hits too many enemy projectiles, right? So we can do the same thing for our tank. We're going to say tank HP um, for this part only. And at here, we're going to set our tank HP to, let's say, uh, 8. And uh, in here, we're going to say, if we are touching our enemy projectiles, then we're going to wait zero seconds, change our HP by negative one. And we're going to say, if uh, tank HP is uh, less than zero, then we are going to, oh, less than one, sorry. Then we are going to, let's say, stop all um, for the sake of, of this project. Uh, yeah. We also want to have the same brightness effect thing, right? So we're going to set brightness effect to zero, let's say, here. And we're going to set brightness effect to, um, let's say, 30 here. So it will tell the player if it gets hit, right? Um, and in our enemy projectile, we also wanted to delete, right? So we can just take this, drag it in here. We're gonna change it to tank and we're gonna just stick it in there so now everything should work properly let's try it out uh, so if they shoot me boom look at that and after eight shots my tank dies that's exactly what we want all right that's one shot two three four five six seven eight boom dead yay so now we actually have a good tank game we can shoot him and I die pretty quickly because I am not a very good tank player guy let's try it out oh this is actually pretty fun pew 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 okay i think the problem is that our tank our um enemy tanks are shooting way too fast so let me go here oh in our enemy projectiles let me change this to let's say 25 so it should be the same as our player oh it's not the same but um that should do so now it should be much easier because the projectiles travel slower pew 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 yay and we died Try it again. Pew 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 pew. Boom boom. Chow chow. Bam bam. Oh my god, there's a ton of there's a ton of tanks here. Oh no, I didn't hit I hit that. That's sad. Well, um that's it for this tutorial. I think this um series has been pretty uh good for everyone. Um it is it was certainly, you know, very fun for me too. Um in the future, um I hope to talk about some uh, more advanced stuff just like this. This is like probably the most advanced thing i've done on this channel so far um so if you're interested feel free to try adding these random trees that you can clone around similar to the enemies you can try to try adding in different types of enemies and you can also try um creating a health bar for the player like what i did in our um, my actual game all right so uh that's it for this tutorial i hope you liked it um i know it's a bit long nearly 20 minutes so um anyway like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more Scratch tutorials.